What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. My name is Corey and this is going to be your daily stock market technical analysis update. We saw some selling across the board in the stock market today. What does that mean for the rest of the year and are we going to hit my price targets? First up, let's take a look at the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, so congratulations for surviving quadruple witching Friday. We did see some volatility and an increase in volume today, which was to be expected with all of those contracts expiring today. However, looking at the price action, we see we went down negative 0.82% on the SPY ETF and we did get a price action close below the 5 EMA. However, you can see intraday that we did find support right around that 13 EMA and people started buying the dip and we did close much higher for the day. So overall, today is still relatively bullish because we're still closing above the 13 EMA and we still have a really strong bullish trend. So remember, in a bull market, when we have a strong bull trend, people are going to buy the dip off of these moving averages as we continue to start running and heading higher. So there's nothing in this chart that tells me that we're reversing just yet. One day of selling does not set a trend and selling is completely normal in every single bull market. Selling is healthy and corrections are healthy in all bull markets before we can head higher. You can see with today's selling we cooled off a little bit and we have a lot more room to run as this Bollinger Band continues to expand and we're getting really close to getting to my price target now at $377. So I still think the S&P 500 SPY ETF will hit $377 before the end of the year. We're likely going back to a low volume melt up situation now that quadruple witching is over and we're going to start melting up on low volume yet again. So I'm looking for the S&P 500 to start heading higher towards 377, and any selling should be a buy the dip opportunity off of the five, 13, and 20 simple moving averages. Watch those moving averages as support levels as we continue to head higher. On the NASDAQ 100 triple Q's ETF, we got within striking distance of my $312 price target and we started to sell off. However, you can see the price action is still really bullish and we saw people buying the dip around the 5 EMA and my support level at $308. We did close above the 5 EMA and we still have a very strong bull trend on the NASDAQ 100. I'm still fully expecting tech to lead the way on this bull rally so I'm expecting tech to exceed my price target of 312 and I am raising my price target on the triple Q's ETF to $321. Just like I said on the S&P 500, this was quadruple witching and the increase in volume and volatility was to be expected, but now we're gonna go back to that low volume melt up situation. So look for this as a buy the dip scenario and you wanna try to buy off the support, which is going to be the five EMA in that $308 level. Today was a great opportunity to buy some triple Q's as we start heading up to my price target at $321. We could find some more resistance around 312, but it should be nothing that we can't break through before the end of the year. Next up is the Dow Jones DIA ETF, and we can see the Dow Jones also found support at our support level at $300. The 20 simple moving average is about to cross over that support level, and I'm looking for the Dow to start heading higher to new all-time highs. You can see we still have bullish price action and a bullish trend on the Dow Jones Industrial. On the ARK ETF, we did go up almost 1% today, and we did see follow through ever since we broke my resistance level at 125. That's now going to be a support level as we head to my next price targets. So on Art K, my next price targets are $128. And if we break and close above 128, that means we're heading to $133. I do think $133 on Art K could be a temporary top for this ETF. Like I said in other episodes, I think Art K and all of the ARC ETFs in general are very overbought and they're likely going to go through a month long correction where we'll see some significant downside. So there is a lot of risk in these ETFs, so play them very safely. We still have the benefit of a very strong bullish trend and we're still getting bullish price action, which means we could continue to head higher. Just like the rest of the ETFs, I could see Art K continue to melt up towards my price target up here at $133 to end the year. However, at that point, that would be a great time to start taking some profits and getting a little more defensive until we see a correction in the ARK ETFs. Next up is the VIX, which is our fear indicator, and this is by far the most bullish sign we saw all day. The VIX actually closed lower today, going down negative 1.64%, and we saw the VIX close below the 20 simple moving average yet again. Normally when the market sells off, we should see fear enter the market and we should have saw the VIX head higher. That is not what we saw. So today's volatility and selling was probably just a rotation as the big money was moving contracts around and entering different positions. That normally shakes out retail and they get out of some positions that they think are gonna start tanking, but that's the exact opposite of what's gonna happen. The market is about to start heading higher and the VIX is telling us that the fear is leaving the market, which means we're heading to new all-time highs. So the VIX is telling you a very important story today. You just gotta listen to it. Next up is the dollar and we still see the dollar weakening and we're still getting bearish price action closing below the 5 EMA. 
We have a very strong bearish trend on the dollar, which means the dollar is going to continue to head lower towards our next support level down here at $89. A weak dollar is a strong stock market. So I'm looking for the dollar to continue to head lower as the stock market continues to head higher. We did see the dollar bounce a little bit today and we did see gold cool off a little bit. As gold finds support, it should have no problem getting to my price target at 1930 as the dollar continues to weaken. So you can see that gold has very bullish price action and it's starting to pick up some bullish trending. So I'm very bullish on gold and I'm looking for gold to get to my price target at 1930 in the very near future. On silver, we broke through that resistance level at 25 and we're starting to rip higher towards my next price target at 26.57. So I'm bullish on silver and I'm bullish on gold and the precious metal should continue to head higher as the dollar weakens. On Bitcoin we see a little bit of cooling off after a monster bullish run but we still have really strong bullish volume and we're still closing over the 5 EMA with a really strong bullish trend. So Bitcoin really has no resistance at this levels and it's just going too far too fast and it's taken a second to cool off on its way to $25,000. We could see some selling and we could see some consolidation once we get to $25,000 but there's almost no resistance until we get there so I'm looking for Bitcoin to get to $25,000 with no problem at all. On Amazon stock we did see some selling today but we did find support at that 5 EMA and we were trading lower for the day and we saw people come in and buy the dip and we closed back over a bullish price action close over all of the moving averages. We're picking up some bullish trending on Amazon and you can see that that 20 simple moving average is starting to cross over the 50 EMA. Amazon is about to start moving in a very big way because you can see Amazon has basically gone nowhere ever since the beginning of September. So when a stock like Amazon consolidates for that long and it finally starts breaking out to the upside, it's going to be moving with a lot of power and a lot of energy, which is likely going to drag the NASDAQ 100 much higher as Amazon continues to head higher. So I'm bullish on Amazon and you can see the bullish price action and the bullish trending building and Amazon should have no problem breaking through my resistance levels at $3,300 and continue to head higher. On Apple stock, we see a very similar sign cooling off and finding support at the 5 EMA with a very strong bullish trend. Ever since Apple broke $124, I raised my price target to $136. Once Apple is done cooling off, it's going to start running towards my price target of $136. Remember, Apple is a market moving stock, so if it's heading to $136, it's going to drag the rest of the stock market higher with it. On the financial sector, we see it finding support right at that 13 EMA and the 20 simple moving average, and we still have the benefit of a bullish trend. On the industrial sector, we're still closing over the 5 EMA, so that's bullish price action and we still have the benefit of this bullish trend. On the healthcare sector, we see the price action over the 5 EMA in a very nice strong bullish trend, and we saw a lot of people buy the dip on healthcare today, driving the price much higher than the low of the day. So going back to the S&P 500, you can see we still have bullish signs across the board. We're still gonna have a weak dollar, which is a strong stock market, and we're seeing fear continue to leave the market, and as the fear bleeds out of the market, we're likely to just keep heading to new all-time highs. Remember, there is the Stocks Channel Discord. If you're looking for a disciplined and profitable trading community, we are absolutely nailing this market and we're making profits every single week no matter what the market does. I can't stress it enough that you don't want to be bearish in this market and you don't want to be trying to call a top or shorting this market. This market has a very strong bullish trend and it's likely going to continue to head higher for many more weeks to come. I really don't see the market reaching a critical top until sometime next year, which we will go over when the time is right. Let's trade the chart in front of us and let's recognize that we're seeing bullish price action and bullish trending. And remember, as it cools down outside, you really need to crank up the heat. Where's my Tesla bulls at? Remember yesterday when we broke and closed above my price target at 647? That was the second break and close above that level, which means we're heading to my next price target at 690. We're going to go ahead and round that up to $700, and we did get a close right around 695. So it looks like we could have finally seen the very critical top in Tesla that we have been waiting all of this time. And we always had a feeling it was going to be somewhere around that nice round number of $700. It looks like we came up $5 short and I would say that wave 5 has now ended. We could obviously still see Tesla head higher, but I think the risk is now completely baked in this stock. And if you're still trying to ride this stock higher, you're really just playing with fire. But for the heck of it, I'm going to go ahead and give you one more upside price target and above 690, we could head up to 745. Go ahead and round that up to 750 and that actually could be the very important top of Tesla. However, I think it's playing with fire if you're trying to ride Tesla to 750 at this point because it's now going to be in the S&P 500 and now it's going to trade with the index and it's no longer going to be that stock that people are going to try to manipulate. 
So following the price action, it's still extremely bullish and following the trend, it's still extremely bullish. So if you're strictly following the price action and following the trend, there's no reason to get out of Tesla just yet. However, all of that will start to change if we start breaking and closing below 650 now. So it was 587, but now that we've broken and closed above 650 and headed to 690, you're now waiting to see if Tesla can close below 650 before you get bearish on this stock. So below 650 is bearish on Tesla and above 690 means we could head to 750. So congratulations to all of you crazy Tesla bulls. My hat's off to all of you and you all deserve all of these profits if you held on this long because it was definitely a wild ride. Next up is Neo stock, and if you're a regular on hot stocks, you know that I've been telling you to buy this stock in the low 40s and the high 30s, and if you listen to what I was saying, you should be reaping huge profits right now and benefiting from that information. So if you haven't already, smash that like button for a fellow Neo bull. Now on Neo, my price targets are much higher at $52, and if we break 52, we're likely going to head to 61. We are going to have resistance at 48, but it's nothing that Neo should have any trouble blasting through. I now consider NEO a running stock and I would buy the dip on almost every occasion as NEO continues to head higher. When you find a stock like NEO and it begins the run, you want to let it run but you also want to start adding into your position slowly as it has dips on the way higher. I have this stock finishing my wave 4 and heading into wave 5 and you saw how bullish and how explosive Tesla's wave 5 was. NEO is a very popular stock and I know a lot of people have been waiting to get into this stock. So anybody who hasn't already gotten to this stock is eventually going to FOMO in, which is only going to send NEO higher. That's just how it works with popular stocks and NEO is absolutely a hot stock, otherwise it wouldn't be on hot stocks. So I'm looking for NEO to blast through my resistance level of $48 and then it's off to the races to the 50s. Once we get into the 50s, anything is possible and we can start blasting into the 60s and 70s. So be patient on NEO, let it run. If you bought low, just let it run and reap those profits and don't sell too soon because it's likely heading much higher. On Palantir stock, we still see it cooling off a little bit and I still don't have Palantir as a buy yet. It could still head lower and I'm still looking to try to buy it off of that 20 simple moving average, which is still just a little bit lower, somewhere around $25. As that 20 simple moving average heads higher, it's likely to start pushing up on the price and we could see Palantir start being bullish once again. But right now it looks like Palantir is still finishing out its consolidation and we need to see that bullish breakout before we get too bullish on the stock because it could also break out to the downside and head much lower. So if Palantir breaks out to the downside, we're looking to buy it at $24 and $21. If it breaks out and closes above $27, it's off to the races and it could be heading back to $33. On Nvidia stock, it's still taking its sweet time being on hot stocks and it's trying to bore everybody before it starts to run, which is completely fine because we got all day on Nvidia. It's still holding up above support and all of these moving averages have now gone to the same exact point which is a really strong confluence area where we're going to see a lot of support. We saw a little bit of a bear trap with Nvidia faking out the bears today looking like it wanted to break down and head lower but then we saw the bulls buy the dip and we saw Nvidia close much higher for the day above that support level again. So Nvidia will have its day and if you're looking to get into a hot stock at the ground level Nvidia might be the hot stock for you as I have Nvidia breaking above 547 and heading to 570 in a flash. A break above 570 should head Nvidia up to my next price target at $620. On Twilio stock, we did get very close to my price target, only a few dollars away, and we did get a little bit of selling, but we still closed up over 1.1% today on Twilio. My price target on Twilio is somewhere around $375, and then I'm going to be taking Twilio off of hot stocks, and we're going to be moving on to the next one. Congratulations to everybody who took my suggestion and bought Twilio all the way down here around $308. Twilio is a great hot stock, and it's one of the best stocks you could buy the dip on as it continues to head higher. Next up is AMD stock and we did see some selling but we did find support at that $94 level which is right around the 13 EMA and we did close above the 5 EMA. I'm looking for AMD to head to my price target of $99 and I think that should be a great time to start taking some profits and moving on to the next hot stock. On Boeing stock we're getting a little bit of a breakdown but it could still be a bear trap and it could still be a false breakdown. We need Boeing to start bouncing soon because you can see that these moving averages are starting to cross to the bear side. We want the advantage of a bullish trend, so we need Boeing to start bouncing and start closing back above that 20 simple moving average. 
we should maintain the bullish trend and Boeing should fly yet once again. My price target on Boeing is still up here at $260. The next hot stock is Splunk. And remember, I was trying to get you all into Splunk down here around $154. And now we're sitting up here around $166. We do have a little bit of resistance at this $166 level on Splunk, but it does look like we should be breaking through there soon and heading to $171. A break and close above $171 should have Splunk heading up to $200 price target that I have. Remember, on the Stocks Channel Discord, I'm bringing new hot stocks to my Discord members every single week. If you're interested in the Stocks Channel Discord community, look at the link in the description of this video. We're a very disciplined and profitable trading community. If you're looking for a trading community, you might want to check us out. I hope you all have a great weekend, and I hope you're crushing this market and locking in lots of profits. And as always, I will see you in the next episode. Hey,